In my last video about lithium iron 18650s, I was talking about charging these batteries using USB power banks, as I am now, the TP4056 chip, and just a DC converter. And I finished that video talking about the capacity of these batteries, and my intention was to build a circuit to test the capacity or the labelled capacity of these batteries. So while this battery is charging up, let's build something to test them. So I'm planning for this circuit to be as simple as possible and use components that I already have in my components box and just dig a few things out. So if we imagine our battery here, the 18650, and what we'll need to do is we will need to use a resistor in this case to be as simple as possible. And calculating the voltage drop across this resistor will allow us to find out how much current is flowing in this circuit. Then we'll need our load, and I'm just going to draw that because it could be a bulb, it could be another resistor, it could be anything really. And then we need to put a MOSFET in, or I've decided to put a MOSFET in because I'll need to switch this load on and off. So it's in the low side of the circuit, so we'll use an N channel MOSFET. And that'll go back to the negative side of the battery. And of course, to do these calculations, well, the easy thing for me is to use an Arduino. So if we imagine a nano. Oops. So we can drive the MOSFET with a digital pin and we can sense the voltage at this point and at this point with some analog pins and as long as we all share the same ground then everything should calculate correctly. I'll add a screen to do some readouts of all the uh, information and I'll use the Arduino and this MOSFET to protect the circuit and the cell, sorry, so perhaps I'll cut it off at 2.9, maybe 3 volts. So I'm afraid we are going to have to do some maths. We're looking at capacity here, which generally I believe is Q, and that the capacity of this battery is the current we can take from it times time milliamp hours so we need to look uh, we need to find sorry the current so v equals ir so i equals v over r times time but we're looking at the voltage drop across this resistor here so actually the sum we need our Arduino to do is V in minus V out over R times time. Because as this battery and as its voltage goes from 4.2 past 3.7 all the way down to 3 volts, this will be changing. We can't just put a load on it and start a timer because that won't give us an accurate result. So if we calculate this, and I'm going to substitute with a small q, every five seconds for example, and q, the total charge, will be q1 plus q2 plus q3, etc, etc, etc. Okay, so I've been through my components um, and I've found the following. So, for a shunt here, the low value resistor, I found a 10 watt 1 ohm resistor. Um, and for my load, I think... I'm going to try various things, but to kick us off, I've got this power resistor here, a 4.7 ohm, 
Um, I think I've got another one, a 10 ohm somewhere, or I could try a bulb. So I think I'm going to plan that into my circuit that I'm going to build, that I'd like to change this load and test a few things. My N-channel MOSFET, this is uh, the one I've been using quite a lot, the 3205, and a battery holder, and an Arduino Nano, and a 5110 uh, 8448 screen. So a bit more mass, I'm afraid, because I need to work out whether these 10 watt resistors are going to be beefy enough for this circuit. But power is uh, IV, isn't it? Current times voltage. Um, and I'm going to need to work out my current first. So current equals uh, V over R. And we're going to be looking at a voltage about 4.2 volts. And if we calculate 4.7 plus 1, our resistive load is 5.7. There is a very, very small resistance in the MOSFET, but I don't think we need to worry about that too much. So on this calculator, that's... 0.73 amps and of course that will get smaller as the voltage goes down the resistance will stay the same the voltage will go down the current sorry if I was shot the current will also come down so three quarters of an amp we're looking at aren't we so power equals IV which is 0.73 times 4.2. So this is our worst case scenario. And I make that to be... So Google tells me that 0.73 times 4.2 is 3.066. So 3 watts. So these 10 watt resistors should be fine. Right, okay, this is my circuit. Uh, space for an Arduino Nano. There we go. Put that in. And headers for a 5110 screen. We've got my 1 watt, sorry, 1 ohm 10 watt resistor that I'm using as a current shunt. Uh, terminals for the battery connector. And terminals for a load so I need to put some wires on there and on the back a bit of a mess but uh, the green wire goes up to the top of my 1 ohm resistor and the blue to the bottom that's uh, analog 0 and analog 1 the red wire is my 3.3 volts for the screen so essentially the battery comes in goes via the on the other side there, the 1 ohm resistor comes up to this port um, terminal here on the load, round to this terminal after it's been through the load, down to the MOSFET, uh, drain pin, and then the source of the MOSFET goes to the negative of the battery terminal. And the white wire is the gate, which is attached to digital pin 10, I think digital pin 10. So the Arduino will be powered over the USB so all of this side of the circuit will take its power from there and then this side through the load and into the battery will obviously be taking current and exhausting the battery. Now I'm not going to go through the Arduino code line by line because it is fairly simple uh, and I'm not the best coder in the world. Um, but all it's doing essentially is this sum here. Um, every second or so, it's checking the voltage drop across that resistor and dividing it by the resistance, timesing it by the time, and adding little q to big q every time it does it. And this is our cumulative capacity. 
So the sketch is showing that no milliamp hours were discharged from this battery, but it's complete because there's no battery in the circuit. But if I put this one in, and at the moment the uh, sketch is quite basic, so if I restart the Arduino, reset it, it can see that the voltage of the battery is 4.2 volts. It's turned the MOSFET on, so the load is now on the battery using the voltage drop across that shunt resistor and the voltage it can see at this point on the resistor the battery voltage it's working out the current and from the current it's working out the milliamp hours so I just need to leave that running for a little while so as we accumulate 100 milliamp hours and we're now at uh, 750 milliamps as that voltage is dropping obviously the current is as well um, now the current shunt it's got a tiny bit of warmth to it but nothing much the MOSFET is completely cool uh, it's quite cold in the shed tonight but um, it is completely cool but this resistor is almost untouchable which is why it's uh, floating in the air here I think it would scorch my uh, bench if it was left okay so sadly I missed the end of the discharge uh, sequence it was taking a while it's been um, just over an hour um, as you can see it's equated to 896 milliamp hours a far cry from the 5000 milliamp hours uh, claimed on this battery but this circuit seems to work quite well so hopefully you found it interesting um, looking at the capacity of these lithium iron cells and building the capacity tester uh, the code will be shown below in a link on my website uh, please feel free to use it and let me know if you can see any improvements to make on it Thanks for watching this video, please like, comment and share and I'll see you next time.